Why did Zelensky fire one of his top commanders? Why is Nepal worried about Russian military recruiters? And how might Donald Trump try to achieve peace in Ukraine? This is week 122 of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. I'm Anna Belliker, reporting to you from Kyiv, and I'll be taking you through the top three stories from Ukraine from this week. President Vladimir Zelensky announced on June 24th that he was dismissing Lieutenant General Yuri Sotol from his role as commander of the Joint Forces. The news came one day after a commander in the Azov Brigade said that he had filed allegations against an unnamed general to the State Bureau of Investigation. Although Zelensky did not specify why Sotol was dismissed from his role, sources confirmed to the media that Sotol was the general named in the complaint, which claimed that his decisions had resulted in unreasonably high rates of Ukrainian military casualty. Sotol has been the commander of the Joint Forces for just over four months, and has faced criticism since his appointment. His appointments as commander in various branches of the military saw heavy Ukrainian casualties and significant Russian advances, particularly in Donetsk Oblast. Mariana Bazula, a member of Zelensky's Servant of the People Party, described Sotol as a butcher, with other politicians, military personnel, and commentators echoing similar concern about Sotol's lack of regard for the lives of Ukrainian soldiers. He has been replaced by Andriy Hnatov, who has been deputy commander of the Southern Operational Command since 2022. Khnatov notably headed the defense of Bakhmut during the spring of 2023, which saw the final months of a nearly year-long battle for the city as it fell to Russia. In an exclusive video obtained by the Kiev Independent this week, a Nepali prisoner of war who had been fighting for Russia estimated that there were over 3,000 of his countrymen in the Russian military. This falls somewhere between the Nepali government's claim that hundreds of its citizens are fighting for Russia and a CNN report that drew estimates from several sources to determine that 15,000 Nepalis are serving in the Russian army. 14 have been confirmed to be killed. In January, Nepal stopped issuing Russian work permits to its citizens after 10 Nepali mercenaries were confirmed to have been killed fighting for Russia. The Nepali government also called on Russia to stop recruiting its citizens with financial enticement, which for many is the sole reason for joining. Those who have been captured say that Russia also promised that foreign fighters would be given jobs away from the front line, only to be thrown directly into combat after minimal training. Media reports suggest that Russia has also been recruiting people from other countries of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, often targeting poor and embattled countries and luring fighters with the promise of high wages. Also this week, North Korea announced that one of its military's engineer units will be deployed to Donetsk Oblast as soon as next month, as part of the strategic defense agreement signed during Vladimir Putin's trip to Pyongyang this month. A Pentagon spokesperson said that North Korean fighters would likely find themselves used as cannon fodder on the front lines, while South Korea said that it would reconsider its previous decision against sending weapons to Ukraine if North Korean troops appear on Russia's side of the battlefield. Two of Donald Trump's advisors have presented him with a plan for ending Russia's war in Ukraine should he be re-elected president this November. The plan reportedly seeks to pressure both Ukraine and Russia into negotiating peace, with threats to cease aid to Ukraine if Kyiv doesn't participate, and increase aid to Ukraine if Moscow refuses. The plan also reportedly stipulates that Ukraine's NATO membership process be put on hold for an extended period of time, and that a ceasefire be called along existing battle lines while peace negotiations are ongoing. The plan was created and presented to Trump by two of his former National Security Council chiefs of staff, and he was said to have responded with relative enthusiasm. Some in Washington have criticized the plan, saying that it lays the ground for Russia to keep its claim to currently occupied territories of Ukraine. One of the advisors who wrote the plan said himself that he thought Kyiv was unlikely to regain control of all Ukrainian territory in the foreseeable future, but that the plan would prevent the war from slipping into a prolonged stalemate with further loss of life. Geopolitical strategist Ann Daly pointed out that the plan also poses a risk to the U.S.'s international reputation, particularly among NATO allies. Even if the U.S. stops supplying aid in an attempt to pressure Ukraine into negotiations, other Western nations will not. Furthermore, if both Russia and Ukraine agree to the negotiations but then can't reach a peace agreement, it'll be a huge failure for the U.S. 
Ukraine has consistently stated that it will not engage in negotiations until Russia fully withdraws its troops from Ukrainian territory. At the first presidential debate on Thursday, Trump again reiterated his claim that if re-elected, he will end the war before his inauguration. He referred to President Zelensky as a salesman and bemoaned the amount of aid that the U.S. has already supplied to Ukraine, but he also said that he would not accept Putin's stated terms for peace, which include Ukraine withdrawing from Russian-occupied territories and fully abandoning its bid to join NATO. With billions already spent in aid and nearly 70% of polled Republicans saying that it's important for Ukraine to win the war, there's still much left ambiguous about what Trump's final position and strategy will be as the election draws closer. That's all for this week. We'll be back next Sunday with more news from Ukraine. Your support is what makes our work possible. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to become a member of the Kiev Independent Community, please visit the link in the description below. I'll see you next week.